the engine's three firmware is constantly being improved and new functions are being added. From version 1.20.1, a new feature is included for easier and quick alignment of a mount, the polar alignment with plate solve function. First, if you haven't already done so, the latest firmware should be installed. There's a separate video tutorial for this. The method presented here only works if you have an unrestricted view of Polaris. If this is not the case, the classic Shiner method should be used. And again, there's already a video for this. Let's start with a new method. To start with the new plate solving routine of the Amgen 3, the Amgen camera should be attached to the guide scope and ideally already focused. In addition, the telescope or the mount should point to the pole star. The firmware of the Amgen 3 contains a database in which stars are stored that are up to 8 degrees away from the pole. The Amgen is therefore able to perform plate solving within these 8 degrees. It is therefore clear that the setup of the telescope to the north should be within this tolerance. A coarse and rough pointing is okay. By the way, this works in the northern as well as in the southern hemisphere. As soon as these first steps are done and the engine is switched on, you navigate to the menu item Polar Align and there you can see by the colon that there is a submenu here. If you press the Set button, you can choose between Visual and Shiner. Please select Visual. In the window that appears now, you can already see some stars and you can also see that the pole has been found and is in the marked direction at a distance of 5.5 degrees. The basic setting here is by the way on the northern hemisphere. You should adjust this if you are on the southern hemisphere. Use the arrow keys to navigate down to the menu item Find Focal Length. Because of the plate solving, the engine is able to determine the exact focal length of your guide scope. After a few seconds, the determined focal length appears on the screen, which you should confirm with yes. The more precisely the focal length was determined, the more precise the plate solving will be and thus your pole position afterwards. The first step is to bring the celestial pole into the viewing window of the engine camera. With the arrow keys, you navigate to the point star alignment and confirm with the set key. An instruction appears on the screen what to do and you confirm this again. The engine now takes a new picture every second and you can follow live how the position of the celestial pole changes. Now start with the declination axis and move it to bring the celestial pole into the view window. You can loosen the declination axis or move it with the hand control. If the distance doesn't get any smaller, you can try a further improvement with the alt azimuth screws. As you can see, the number on the screen is now getting smaller. As soon as the celestial pole is in the view window of the Amgen, the view changes from a number of degrees to a small cross symbol. This cross marks the celestial pole and you have to navigate the cross as best as you can in the center of the frame. As soon as the cross is more or less in the middle, you can press the set button to continue and start the actual polar adjustment. To do this, release the clamping of the right ascension axis and rotate it by at least 15 degrees. You can move the right ascension axis by 19 degrees or even more, but then you run into the risk of the celestial pole disappearing from the field of view again. So be a little careful here. If you have moved the axis too little, the engine will acknowledge this with a corresponding message. As soon as the message rotated field is solved, the rotation point is known appears, you can follow the instruction that says press set to fix the point. So press the set button and confirm continue. The position of the celestial pole is now saved. Another window opens and in this you can now see two crosses. On the one hand the true celestial pole as an orange cross and the actual position of your mount as a green cross. It is unnecessary to say that you now have to try to bring these two crosses closer by making small corrections to the alt and azimuth axis. Which axis and in which direction 
you have to find out through trial and error. As soon as the cross is approached, an automatic zoom starts to help you to refine the lineup. Also pay attention to the small degree display at the bottom left, which gives you an indication of whether you are turning the right screw and in the right direction. The necessary settings on the alt azimuth screws must now be more and more sensitive. As soon as both circles are as good as possible in cover and the display sinks to a value below, say, 5 arc minutes, you have achieved a sufficient pole position for the vast majority of purposes. If you want to improve the result, you can repeat the entire procedure, which will lead to greater precision. A few more things. If too few stars are displayed in the live view and thus plate solving fails, you can increase the exposure factor value. The brightest four stars are always used for plate solving. That means it can happen, for example, if you work with an off-axis guider, that the focal length is simply too big, then this method does not work. It should work well in a focal length range of 50mm to 300mm. It probably still works with 400mm, but then it gets tight. Needless to say, that a fast optic helps when it comes to finding enough stars for plate solving. I hope this video was understandable and helpful. Have fun with this new feature of the Amgen 3 Auto Guider, clear skies and see you soon.